Hello. New research is published every day all over the world, and this week I learned about an extremely worrying discovery by paediatric allergy experts. Now this relates to anaphylaxis, which is a sudden, severe, potentially life-threatening reaction that some people have. Now before I tell you about this, please do follow my Asthma Spotlight podcast, and if you find this helpful, then please do share it with others. Also, as we're nearly reaching the first anniversary of the Asthma Spotlight podcast, please do send me any questions that you want me to discuss in the future. Also, your comments would be very welcome. And my email is in the link. It's asthmaspotlight at gmail.com. Okay, so what is anaphylaxis? This is a serious, life-threatening allergic reaction. usually happens after eating food that you're allergic to. And common foods that can cause this are peanuts, other nuts, shellfish and other foods. And also insect venom, for example bee stings, can cause anaphylaxis. And anaphylaxis sometimes happens after exercise and after a big meal. So, food allergy is not the only cause of anaphylaxis. Now, I'm focusing on children today, and if your child has asthma and also has food allergy or a history of anaphylaxis, it's essential that in addition to asthma, that both of you become experts in managing anaphylaxis. The reason for this is that the combination of these two that's asthma and a tendency to have anaphylactic attacks means that you're at high risk of having a severe asthma attack or of having an anaphylaxis attack. And both of these can be very serious and could be fatal. Okay, so I hope it's clear why I'm talking about anaphylaxis in this Asthma Spotlight podcast. Well, the reason is because some people who have asthma also get anaphylaxis, and it's important to know how to treat both of these conditions. And in the case of anaphylaxis, treatment needs to be given immediately before even calling for emergency help. So there are two important things to know. First, if you or your child has asthma and food allergy, or if you've had anaphylaxis in the past, you should make sure that you take your preventer inhaler that's been prescribed by your doctor for your asthma. And if you haven't been prescribed a preventer inhaler, which is usually an inhaled corticosteroid, you should discuss this with your doctor urgently. Of course, you should also ensure that you collect repeat prescriptions that have been prescribed for you. Secondly, If you or your child has anaphylaxis, you should ensure that you always have two adrenaline injectors with you for emergency use. Now these do go out of date, and so it's important to make a note of the expiry date and to ensure that you get a new prescription before that date. In addition, you should have an allergy or an anaphylaxis self-management plan unless it's provided by your doctor, and you must make sure that you use your adrenaline injector correctly. So you need to find it hard to use it. There are dummy devices and also videos which you can use to, to learn how to use your adrenaline injector, but it's important that you know how to use it before you actually have to use it in an emergency. So why am I talking about anaphylaxis this week? Well, it's because this has been in the news. Specialist paediatric allergy doctors, Dr. Paul Turner and Professor Adam Fox, presented some new, extremely worrying research findings at an allergy conference in England. Now, these specialists did a very large survey of over 130,000 children who have food allergy recorded in their medical records. And they found that 3% of these children 
had been treated for emergencies in the United Kingdom hospitals for anaphylaxis. And what was extremely worrying is that 4 in 10, that is 40% of these children who had had an anaphylaxis attack, had not been provided with a prescription for an adrenaline injector after the attack. Okay, so while anaphylaxis is not common, but in those people who get it, it can be life-threatening. So for people who have had an anaphylactic attack, they and their families would know what happened and what symptoms they had. And if you or your child has had asthma and food allergy or bee sting allergy, it's important to find out how to tell if you're having an anaphylactic attack so you can give yourself the treatment as early as possible. So how do you recognize an anaphylaxis attack? What usually happens, and this can of course be different for different people, is that your breathing gets difficult because your air passages swell up. You may get irritation or itchiness in your mouth or your throat soon after eating something that you're allergic to or after being stung by a bee if you're allergic to bees. You may get an itchy rash, you may feel nauseous and you may even vomit. You may just get pain in your tummy. And another problem is that in anaphylaxis your blood pressure could drop suddenly and you could go into shock. So you may feel lightheaded or even pass out. So not all of these things may happen to you at the same time and all of these things may not happen to you at all. However, it's important to notice if you suddenly become unwell after eating and it's therefore important that you make the connection that you become unwell after eating. Okay, so you need to be aware of a few things. From the research that these doctors did, it's very clear that 4 out of 10 children who were treated for anaphylaxis were not prescribed an adrenaline injector after they left the hospital. And the most important message in this podcast is that you or your, if you or your child have had an anaphylactic attack, you need to be treated very quickly, that is, as soon as the symptoms start. So it goes without saying that you need to have injectors for adrenaline available and you need to have two injectors with you all of the time. Why two? Because sometimes the first one doesn't work or the dose in the first one isn't enough and you need a second dose. So if you are ever treated for anaphylaxis, you may not be automatically referred to a specialist. So you should ask your doctor about this. You should ask your doctor if the hospital referred you, and if not, then discuss why not, and ask your doctor whether a referral can be made to a specialist. And one of the most important reasons for being referred is so that a clear diagnosis can be made on the cause of the anaphylactic attack, and to identify exactly what you are allergic to, and then the specialist would be able to advise you how to avoid future attacks, what to avoid in the future, and to advise your doctor on the best treatment for you. The best treatment usually includes an antihistamine tablet or a syrup and also an adrenaline injector. And of course, once the diagnosis has been made, then people who look after your child can be informed they can be provided with the necessary treatment and schools can also be informed. And this is really important because at schools um, sometimes children bring foods into the classroom which could cause a life-threatening anaphylactic shock attack. Now these adrenaline injectors are automatic so they're easy for non-medically trained people to use. Of course you've got to be shown how to use it. And what a specialist clinic would do is you'd be provided with teaching on how to use the adrenaline injector and also you'd be provided with an allergy self-management plan. Now if there's a long waiting list to be seen by a specialist 
and you've had an anaphylaxis attack, uh, which has been treated in hospital, and they did not prescribe an adrenaline injector for you, you should discuss this with your doctor, because you may need to be prescribed with an injector so that you've got one available until the time that you are seen by a specialist. Now, what if you or your child has asthma and food allergy? One of the questions you should ask is, have you really got food allergy? Has this been diagnosed by an allergy specialist? There are conditions which can cause itching in your throat or your mouth when you eat, and particularly fruit, for example, which may not be true allergy. And so it's important to differentiate these conditions from true allergy to food. And for this, you often need an allergy specialist to do this. So if you haven't been diagnosed, you should discuss this with your doctor who will decide whether you need to see a specialist or not. However, as I've said, this combination of these two conditions, that's food allergy and asthma, is potentially dangerous. So in my view, it would be important to discuss this with your doctor so that you can be referred to a specialist allergy clinic to ensure that a diagnosis can be made so that you or your child are treated appropriately and so your doctor and your child's school can be advised appropriately. Now I have put some links to information for you and your doctor about anaphylaxis and also about allergy self-management plans on my website at worldwideweb.bigcatdoc.com So it's www dot bigcatdoc.com if you look for the document called information for all so in summary anaphylaxis is a sudden reaction to something you're allergic to could be food or a bite by an insect like a bee sting people who've had anaphylaxis which has been treated in a hospital should be prescribed adrenaline auto injectors after discharge from hospital and the diagnosis should ideally be confirmed by an allergy specialist. Children who have both asthma and food allergy are at great risk of a severe asthma attack or of an anaphylaxis attack, both of which could be life-threatening. So if you've got asthma, it's really important to take your preventer asthma treatment as prescribed by your doctor. It's important to collect that treatment when Uh, you run out and it's also important to have two adrenaline injectors on you all the time. In addition you should have two agreed self-management plans one for asthma and one for allergy. And finally and probably most important you should be very aware of what sort of symptoms or warning signs suggest an anaphylaxis attack. And you should tell friends, you should tell your teachers, so that they also know how to recognize these attacks. So if you are having symptoms suggestive of an anaphylactic attack, it's important that you take your adrenaline injector immediately before calling the emergency services. This is an emergency that needs treatment straight away. And when you do call the emergency services, Tell them that you have asthma and anaphylaxis and that you've had symptoms suggestive of an anaphylaxis attack and that you've taken the adrenaline for that attack.